Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is the Basic Builder back in Enshrouded bringing you another building video. In today's video, we're going to be building a small cottage for a village. Uh, in the background, you can see the materials that we're using. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Our foundation is going to be using the rough stone block material, and we're going to be using the four by four foundation piece and the total foundation is going to be a four by two rectangle with one four by four foundation piece sticking out on the very end All right, so now we're going to go ahead and lay down the foundation for our porch. So we're going to go halfway down the normal foundation blocks that we place for the house. Uh, we're going to go down by two and lay down two four by four stones. And then we're going to go ahead and place in our stairs to get up onto the porch. All right, so now that we've moved on to the next section of the build, we're gonna be placing down the walls and the upstairs floor. First thing we're gonna be doing is starting out placing some flintstone columns on all the corners of the build. Alright, so next thing you're going to want to do is move Ellen up to your 2 meter by 2 meter block and we're going to go around and remove underneath all the columns that we just placed part of the foundation. Once you've got that done, you're going to go ahead and take your flintstone, uh, or select your flintstone I should say, with your 2 meter blocks and place them back up underneath all the columns. Now that we've got that completed, we're going to go ahead and place down our front stairs. Uh, this is going to be done individually instead of using the, the blueprint. Um, and it just kind of gives it a little bit more character, I guess you could call it. Uh, placing it down this way, and then we'll move on to the next section. All right, so now that we got that completed, we're going to go ahead and start with the wall pieces. We're going to use the flint stone again. We're using this two meter uh, by two meter wall piece. And essentially, we're just going to go around and place this all around the edges of the house. Except on the front side, what we're doing is actually offsetting it, uh, as you can see here, as we're, we're placing it down for this big bay window. We're going to offset it in just one. The rest of the house is going to be placed right on the edge of the foundation. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start working on some front detailing of the build. So here you can see we're using the column from the two meter section and essentially placing it at the same height as the other columns that we placed earlier in the build.
All right, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is kind of get a rough shape of our fireplace that we're going to place in later. Um, and then we will continue on working on the walls. All right, so now that we've got that completed, we're gonna go ahead and take our flint stone, not our regular stone as I have here, but we're gonna take our flint stone and we're gonna use, I uh, don't know exactly what this piece is called, but it's essentially the one that will go over your doors and, and all that. It's the long horizontal piece. So we're gonna use that in flint stone and we're gonna go ahead and line the whole entire uh, upper part of the walls with this. All right, so now that we have completed that, we're gonna go ahead and take our two meter wall piece. It's like the half wall. And we're going to switch over to the shroud wood and go ahead and start working on the rest of the walls. So you can see we have a little gap on the bottom because we are lining it up on the inside of the column. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is take the flint stone and fill in that gap. And then we're going to add a few little bits of details um, on this side of the wall. There's not going to be any windows as this is where the stairs will go in later in the build. All right, so at this point in the build, I was like, ah, I want to add a few more details, especially to the uh, the outer edge, kind of give it more of a, a lip. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're, again, using the flint stone building pieces, and for now, we're gonna work on the front, and then later in the video, we're gonna work on the rest of the, the, the that cottage, I guess you could say. Um, and all we're doing right now is just adding another layer of detail to the outside of this build. All right, so from this point, we're going to go ahead and work on this bay window a little bit more, kind of give it a, uh, a little jut out, I guess you can call it, uh, making it just essentially stick out a little bit more from the main walls of the house. Um, again, we're going to use the flintstone here, 
and then we'll actually remove some of the blocks on the bottom and throw in some shroud wood just to uh, kind of make it look uh, a little bit nicer. All right, so we're going to actually move back on into the inside and remove some of those blocks like I had mentioned earlier. I uh, just noticed it from the outside that it looked a little bit too small, so that's exactly what we're doing here. Now what we're also adding is a little bit more detail just to add a little bit more dimension to the actual build itself. So you can see here I'm starting to place down uh, the flintstone building blocks looking at it a little bit more i was like no this doesn't look quite right so we are going to use the shroud wood for this instead right here along this bottom All right, so now we slept through the night. We're going to continue working on the walls a little bit more. And now what we're going to add is some depth to these columns from the front uh, and essentially filling in this corner here. You can do this at the start uh, of the build and kind of skip this part. But just as I was going through the building process and you know, process of elimination and, and figuring out what I needed to do do at the time I went ahead and added this in at this point all right so now we're going to go ahead and continue adding that outer band detail like we did on the front through the rest of the house now what we're going to do is go ahead and take the stone uh, block and we're just using the one meter by one meter and we are going to add a little bit of detail up underneath that so it looks like it's given a, a little bit of support um, it's just the, i love the way that these building blocks just mesh together uh, and add that little bit of detail so we're going to add that to the front of the build only uh, if you want to you could continue that all the way around the house but for this particular build i only did it to the front Alright, so you can see me now adding in some blocks back up underneath that. Later on, you're actually going to see me delete those again. So if you have placed those and if you're following along, you can delete those out. You don't have to actually place them at all. Um, I just didn't like the way it looked. It kind of made these where the windows are going to be on either side of the front door a little too small. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is finish off like we've done before, kind of closing in those columns a little bit, adding a little bit more depth to the build. Alright, so now we're going to hide those ugly bits right there on the front of the building. Uh, with the flintstone, again, we're just using that 2 meter uh, wall piece. And then we're going to kind of delete out the rest of this. So you can see here now, I've realized that it was just too small for the window. So we're actually going to delete uh, all that out at this point. All 
right, so now we're going to go ahead and again take our stone building blocks and continue that little bit of detail uh, on the front side of the uh, build here. Alright, so now what we're going to do is take our flint stone again, uh, that two meter little wall piece, switch it over to the shroud wood and continue filling in the gaps on the wall while also adding in uh, the windows and where the windows are actually going to be placed. Alright, so now that we've got that wall completed, we're working on the next wall on the other side of the fireplace. And this wall is actually going to have a window. This is going to be like the kitchen area of the build. Uh, and then uh, where you saw me working over there is going to be like the living room and where the stairs and all that goes. So again, we're going to continue with the shroud wood building pieces uh, as our interior walls. And then uh, we'll continue on to the next wall. All right, so we, now that we got the back wall completed, we're gonna go ahead and work on the, this little side wall. Again, we're gonna add a window into here. Uh, this is gonna be like the eating area. So I'm gonna place a table and some chairs and all that kind of good stuff in this particular jut out. All right, so now moving on over to the final wall. I'm again kind of lining up what I want to see here, um, knowing that it's two blocks from the edge, and then we're gonna place a window, and then we'll have a, a little run where we don't have any windows, and then we'll place one on the very, very end of this wall. All right, so now that we have completed all the walls, we're gonna go ahead and work on our stairs. So we're gonna take the two meter staircase here and then uh, kind of make an L shape is essentially what we're going for here. Um, and it's gonna fit up nicely right next to the fireplace. So I'm, I'm pleased with, with the layout so far of the way this build is going. Alright, so now that we've got that, we're going to go ahead and place all of our floors 
uh, on the second floor where the bedroom will be located. I'm thinking I'm going to put probably maybe two or three beds in here, so it's still a good sized cottage uh, for more than one player, which is, you know, it's, it's nice. You know, I know everybody loves building, but if you're not much of a builder, this would be a, a, a good build essentially for someone in your group to uh, to tackle uh, for for your worlds and your server and all that. Alright, so we're going to be finishing up the floors here very, very soon, and then we get to move on to my favorite part, not really, which is roofing. Uh, I'm really, really bad at roofing still in this game, but, you know, I'm learning, and uh, I think it turned out good in the very end, so let's move on to that section. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and start the roofing part of this build. To me, it's the most complicated part of the build. Um, and it's just it's just me. It's the way that I build, that I overcomplicate things and overthink things too much. So you'll see a lot of stops and cuts and all that in the video, uh, especially during this part. But uh, we're going to use the... Um, two meter gable end pieces here and then we're going to fill it in with the one meter uh, block and we're going to use the um, the uh, flintstone building pieces sorry guys i uh, am struggling in this video <laughs> i'm recovering from covid so as i'm doing this voiceover i'm still very very congested and my brain is all over the place so please do forgive me Anyways, enough about that. Let's continue on. So now we're going to move over to the four meter tall uh, building blocks. And again, we're going to use the gable end on them. Obviously, we're a little bit wider than normal because we added that overhang. So we're just going to fill this in and then uh, our roof will be ready to go. So I noticed when I placed that building piece there, uh, I realized that my blocks were a little bit off. So we're going to fix that here shortly. So here you can see now we're going back to add that one meter uh, block uh, just like so. And then we're going to work our way over to this side. And this is when I start falling off the roof. <laughs> but. Uh, you can you can you'll see me going through the process of like what am i missing here and why is it so far off so we're going to fix that here essentially we just need to add uh, a little bit of building block uh, close to the very end so yeah there it looks horrible but uh, we're going to fix that just in a few seconds All right, so now we're going to go ahead and take our tar wood roof pieces and we're going to start with the two meter uh, roofing piece and essentially we're going to cover up this front section here and then we'll work on to the upper section or the bigger part of the build.
All right, so now that we've placed these roof pieces, we're going to go ahead and cap them off with a little roof top, uh, roof top cap, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I don't know the name of the building piece, but we're going to go ahead and cap it off, and then we're going to move to the front and work on the overhang just to add a little bit more depth to the front of the build. So we're going to go ahead and select our roof piece, uh, the one building block roof piece, um, and we're going to go ahead and create this overhang. Uh, probably should be using the scaffolding here, but I'm not too far off the ground so I can see kind of what I am doing. So far it's looking really, really good, and but we're going to go ahead and make it uh, out too wide instead of the one wide. Alright, so now that we have finished up that front, we are going to go ahead and work on the main big part of the roof. So again, we're going to be using the same roof texture and essentially it's going to be the same just from a, a bigger version of the smaller roof. So you can see now we're going to go ahead and select our roof cap piece there. Again, we're going to create that overhang where it is two blocks out to the uh, outside here so we're going to check that now it looks like we're still one block uh, so we're going to go ahead and add that on in and then we will continue all the way down the roof until it is closed in Alright, so now that we have gotten that completely closed in and overhung over there on the uh, right hand side of the house, we're going to go ahead and close in this gap and then we will remove the blocks from the inside just to create a nice uh, flowing roof and it all connects together. That's one thing I really like about Enshrouded and the just the building in general is that it the pieces mesh so well together it's just it's very nice uh, good change in the building mechanics of a survival game um, so I really do thoroughly enjoy it all right so now we're just going to go ahead and take our roof building block and just go in and remove 
everything that was sticking through the, the roof uh, where we just placed enclosed in that gap between the big roof and the smaller roof. Alright, so now that that is complete, we're going to go ahead and continue filling in the gaps and closing in this roof for good. Alright, so now that we've completely closed it in, we're going to go ahead and finish the last overhang of this build. And then the roof will be pretty much complete. Although we do have to add the dormer in and that will be coming in here shortly. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and move on in and start to create the stormer. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and take our roof piece and we're going to just start removing sections of the roof. Now, I realized once I got done building this dormer that it was actually offset from the front door and I was not happy about that. So I ended up going back. I did not want to show the whole process of moving everything over. So I did fix it. Um, so you'll see in the final product that the dormer is now centered over the front door and everything is pretty much symmetrical so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take the roof piece once we're done removing the last bit of the roof and we're going to go ahead and place them down and what happens when you stack these roof pieces on top of one another is it kind of creates a wooden wall so essentially the texture that's underneath the whole uh, roof, it will create that as a, a wall piece, essentially. It looks really, really good. It creates nice uh, arches and shapes and, and all that. So I was really pleased with the way this, this turned out in the very end.
All right, so now that we got the dormer almost kind of outlined and complete, we're gonna go ahead and close in the side walls, making sure that the, the wall pieces kind of just flow straight into the roof. Again, we're using the roof building block, uh, the one meter by one meter building block, and essentially just stacking them up. It leaves a nice wooden texture. I like the, the, the wooden wall, it looks really, really good, really, really clean. So. As you can see, we've also placed some uh, shard, uh, shroud wood down just as kind of a, a windowsill uh, for later when we start to place the windows. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is place our roof. And a little bit tricky because, again, I was not using the scaffolding at all during this build. So uh, we really wanted to make sure that it was lined up perfectly and then we're going to go in and also add a little bit of an overhang as well and then obviously we'll mesh it all into the main roof and then we'll delete the the ugly bits from the inside and that'll be it All right, so the last thing we need to do on this dormer is go ahead and cover up the top part, basically the gable in. And then also, so we don't need it so wide, we're gonna go ahead and place a few more building pieces of those of the roof, essentially. We're gonna go ahead and place those just to give it a little bit more depth as well on the inside where the window's gonna be. But first, we're gonna create an overhang, like I said before, just to add that uh, character and the depth to the front of the build uh, again should have had the scaffolding <laughs> I'm sure all of you by now are like just use the scaffolding it's so much easier <laughs> but again scramble brained all week uh, been been bedridden again with COVID so I recorded all this uh, and just was not really thinking so Anyways, we're going to go ahead and add these wall pieces in and then we will be completely done with the roof. So what I can take away from this is trial and error and take your time. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of detail into the front of this build with a handrail around the porch. So all we're going to do is we're going to use our, our flint instead of the tarred wood. Uh, never used the tarred wood before. Don't really like it all that much uh, as far as the wall pieces are concerned. But uh, for the roof, it looks really nice. So for this railing, all we're going to be doing is taking our window pieces and essentially use them as handrails. So as I was going through this process, I realized that I wanted to keep the aesthetics of the build um, nice, essentially, and went ahead and replaced that first layer of the just rough stone with some flint and it also will allow the columns for the the handrails to essentially flow all the way into the ground instead of leaving an ugly wooden piece that hangs out the bottom of them so that's exactly what we're doing now so once we have this completed we're going to go ahead and take our windows that you just craft on the workbench and we're going to sink them down a little bit and we're just going to do two at a time and then we're going to place our posts and repeat that process until the very end
All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the last part, which is adding the chimney. So at the very beginning, when we were doing our foundation, we laid down uh, this exterior block essentially for the chimney. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and use our flintstone for this part of the build as well. And we're going to use the two meter by two meter blocks, as you can see, as we're using right now. Uh, on the corners at the bottom near the ground, so the chimney, again, it does not have that ugly wooden, I don't understand why it does this, the, the little wooden piece that essentially sticks out uh, from the underside of the flintstone. So we don't want that border. We don't. So we're going to go ahead and actually delete the corners, uh, just a one meter by one meter uh, stone part of that corner out from that foundation and it kind of allows those blocks to essentially go down actually we don't delete the one meter by one meter we delete the whole front face of that so essentially it's just a, uh, uh, we should have just used a, a a foundation of flint instead of stone in the very end so keep that in mind if you're at this point in the video uh, that's essentially what we're going to be doing All right, so now that we have the base structure of the chimney completed, you know, one of the things I like about this game is you don't have to vent your fireplaces, which is extremely nice. So you can make some really nice looking chimneys. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just throw that out there really quick. But uh, anyways, what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to uh, place down like kind of a bottom floor so it's not sitting directly on the foundation when you place the campfire. And then all we're going to do is kind of create a little mantle and a hearth and then we'll move on to the outside on top of the roof to finish off the top of the chimney. All right, for the last part of this build, we're going to continue the top of the chimney. I kind of struggled here a little bit because we essentially used a three meter, uh, or not three meter, uh, essentially we, we use a not a square is the easiest way to put it. It's not square. So um, as you can see here, the roof actually kind of created a funny little uh, issue there so we just took our block building block and deleted those out and then we'll just fill those back in with the normal building blocks but going back to what I was saying because this roof is, or this chimney is not necessarily square it took me a little bit of time to figure out how or what direction I wanted to design this to make it look aesthetically pleasing and I think the end result turned out pretty well. Um, I cut out a lot of the, the parts that did not make the actual final cut of the build uh, just because the video would have gone on another 15-20 minutes and that's just not necessary for y'all to have to watch another 15 or 20 minutes of video that's uh, or build that's not going to be in the final product. So. What you are seeing though is in the final product and I think it turned out really, really nice. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. So it's kind of a, a four by three is essentially what it all comes down to is a four by three. And then we make some nice little decorations on the top just to kind of border it. And then uh, that's about it. So guys, thank you so much for this point of the video. If you are still watching, I do greatly appreciate it. What we're going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to kind of give a little walkthrough of the build and maybe some pictures here and there. Who knows? But uh, 
I'm going to finish it off off screen as far as doing some interior decorations and all that. It's not necessary for me to show all that good stuff because um, it's not really good stuff because I have to craft it all and and that's boring. So guys, thank you so much and I will uh, let the video finish playing out and we will get down into the tour. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the building portion of this video. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is take a little house tour. I've got this thing completely decorated and I am thoroughly happy with the way it has turned out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump inside. So as you can see up here on the porch, we have our workbench. We put a nice little chair and also these wall hanging uh, firefly lamps absolutely love them moving on into the inside here it is quaint it is cozy it is very very small <laughs> but we got some nice built-in uh, chests here into the wall got a nice little candle and some nightstands a little living room here nothing nothing too crazy a little pot a little fireplace and some chairs moving on in over here we have our kitchen area it's nice it's quaint it's cozy just the way i like it added a little bookshelf here threw some knickknacks on here and then you have this nice tight little dining room area with some hanging firefly lamps absolutely love them as well let's move on up to the top of the stairs here you are you have a nice quite quaint little bedroom uh, absolutely again I absolutely love this you got a nice window to be able to look out uh, some upgraded beds some uh, chairs some chests for storage as well as this bookshelf so and here's that bay window like I said in the video it was offset I didn't want to show it but I have since fixed it and then obviously I added a nice little candle there to the very end just to add a little bit of illumination to that side of the build as well so that is the bedroom that is the actual cottage it's it's small but it's so cozy which i thoroughly do like very very much so guys thank you so much for tuning into today's video i do hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave a thumbs up on the video leave a comment down below what your favorite part was and uh in the next video we're going to be building for the blacksmith uh, as part of this little village build so stay tuned for that uh, guys thank you so much again if you're new to the channel welcome go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me i would greatly appreciate it and we will see you in the next video take care guys Bye bye